Warning, the thoughts on this podcast are thoughts of our own and our guest. Please don't sue us. Bros? Anna, Anna. Nowadays, life is intertwined with technology. Let's figure it out. Welcome to Life, Tech, and Sundry. Tonight on LTS Podcast, we have our special guest, Jonathan. Everybody, a round of applause. Yes, Jonathan. And on my left, virtually speaking, Marcos. And on my right, virtually speaking, Josue. And as for myself, thank you for coming and listening to us. My name is Alan, and welcome to our podcast show tonight. Uh, tonight, we have a couple of points that we are going to run through and read. And uh, starting off, we're going to start off with you, Mr. Marcos. Please, please go ahead. You got it. So, uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking. And while Marcos finishes uh, doing <laughs> the adjustments, I'll just read off the, the actual uh, part one segment. So as the title, Marcos has titled this, Marcos brings to you point number one, a better way to measure acceleration. So um, Marcos, yeah, if, yes, beautiful. Now, can you read through your uh, paragraphs here? <laughs> I bring to you number one, a better way yes. to measure acceleration. Yes, <laughs> you're going at the speed. You're going at the speed limit down the two lane road when a car barrels out of a driver out of a driveway on your on your right. You slam on the brakes and with a fraction of a second of the impact, an airbag inflates, saving you from serious injury or even death. And the airbag deploys thanks to an accelerometer, a sensor that detects sudden changes in velocity. Accelerometers keep rockets and airplanes on the correct flight path, provide navigation for self-driving vehicles, and rotate images so that they stay upright. They stay upright side up on cell phones and tablets among other essential tasks addressing the increasing demand to accelerate mm, to uh, accurately measure acceler acceleration in smaller navigation systems and other devices researchers at the national institute of standards and technology NIST for short, have developed an accelerometer a mere millimeter thick that uses laser lights instead of mechanical strain to produce a signal. Although a few other accel accelerometers also rely on light, the design of the, uh, of the NIST instrument makes the measuring process more straightforward, providing higher accuracy. It also operates over a greater range of frequencies and has been more rigor rigorously tested than similar devices. Not only is the NIST device known as an optomechanical accelerometer, much more pre uh, precise than the best commercial accelerometers, but it also does not need to undergo the time consuming process of periodic calibrations because the instrument uses laser lights of a known frequency to measure acceleration. It may ultimately serve as an as a portable reference standard to calibrate other accelerometers now on the market, making them more accurate. And the accelerometer also has the potential to improve uh, inertial navigation 
in such critical systems as military aircraft, satellites, and submarines, especially when a GPS signal is not available. NIST researchers Jason uh, Gorman, Thomas Lebrun, David Long, and their colleagues describe their work in the journal Optica. The study is part of NIST on a chip, a program that brings the Institute's cutting edge measurement, science, technology, and expertise directly to users in commerce, medicine, defense, and academia. Read more at fizz.org. Once again, that is fizz.org. Fizz.org. Thoughts, please, thoughts? Yes, yes. I, I, I would like to start, if that's okay. Go ahead, please. So, again, uh, <laughs> like I tend to, to say, usually, it's not my forte, but um, right here, this uh, the paper, in this document you have presented, Mr. Marcos, of acceleration accelerometers. Um, I think it's interesting. I think nowadays, these are essential to our like daily lives, whether it be in uh, our cell phones or GPS signals, um, things like that. I think it's really important that we take these into consideration and if there's any advancement in the technology, we should definitely take advantage of it in order to further our, our whatever it, it, it might concern us, whether it be commerce, medicine, defense, or in this case, the research of the actual study of accelerometers. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's as far as I can like <laughs> share with, uh, with the the listeners uh, about my thoughts about this but um i mean if there's anything else that you guys want to like i guess uh chime in with uh, i'm all ears jonathan also out of all of the topics this is probably the one i have the least familiarity with but i mean in terms of practical implications you know you've got your cell phone um more accurate bombs maybe because those depend heavily on accelerometers especially for target guided systems it'd be yeah. nice to you yeah. know have uh, i guess uh, hard drives when they were mechanical would would have sometimes have accelerometers but now that they're solid states that's less of an issue because they would actually put the, the hard drive heads in a uh, in a resting position so you didn't damage the drives but now it's a solid state who cares this doesn't have any moving parts anyway. True, true, true. Mr. Uh, Jose, any, any thoughts? My thoughts are as follows. I imagine. No, but uh, I mean, it's. I don't, I don't know, because I mean, it is it is annoying calibrating accelerometers, especially like on your phone and stuff like that. Um, but I never viewed it as a really big issue. Um, but I could, I could see some, some potential things, I guess, measuring more like instantaneous speeds. So like at the moment of a crash, how fast can you travel? Um, things like that, because I mean, I know that some monitors are good for like consistent, uh, speed measuring, uh, and they can detect like instantaneous, uh, speed changes. But as far as like, like finding out instantaneous speed, I think they do have difficulty with it. So, um, it might be a little bit better. I'll have to see it in action though. But from the way it it looks, since it's saying right here, uh, uses light of a known frequency to measure acceleration, which I th it is a good idea. Um, from the looks of it measure I don't, I don't know which frequency they know you said of a known frequency um but if it's uh if it's high enough then i think we can measure um more like i said more instantaneous speeds uh so that could be a little bit more useful 
um, curious to see how this ends up in, say, the medical field, which, from an emerging technology standpoint, wearable, wearable technology, and especially having devices embedded either in clothes or think about how many more people have Fitbits and Apple Watches these days. Fitbits are not particularly accurate, at least when That's it comes true. to measuring steps and and some of the other metrics that they take. This would actually be quite interesting to apply that to a device like that, especially as more and more people end up needing to wear that. No, yeah, that's true. Um, I feel it, but I feel like for these situations, like I want to see it more than like read about it. <laughs> um, that's that, I mean, that's just for me. I want to like see how it works, how it, how it, uh, how it handles in certain loads or in certain situations either. Maybe it can be more more accurate than what we have. So, so yeah, Marcos, what's your thoughts? At the end of the day, everything is and we're going on. <laughs> it's iterative, <laughs> right? Uh, we started with the uh, with the um, dial up phone. We started with uh, dial up internet and all those things. Then we went to the smartphone internet service, three G, not. 3G, uh, 4G, LTE, all those things. So it's only natural that even our measuring instruments get a get a level up or a, yeah, I'd say a level up if anything. And then, um, unfortunately, the first ones that are going to test regular rigorously test is definitely going to be the military. Unfortunately, I mean, I'm not, I'm not for violence. Well, but- I mean, I, I don't, I don't think it's unfortunate <laughs> because it's not exactly like a, it's not like they're going to do it for like. Their first test might not be bombs. It might be something more practical. A national so navigation. For America. And for, yeah. Um, at the end of the day, yeah, that's, that's I mean, a meme, then, but like, it's then, true. Like, let's be honest. Like With the military, they're going to have more harsher environments. So they can really push it to the limit. So I don't think it's like a To like an a 80s theme song. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't think... like I think I don't think it's like a bad thing. It's probably a better thing. Um, uh, um, we don't... And uh, not that, too long have, ago, uh, sorry, we, we won't have people complaining about like, where's this data going to? You know, <laughs> oh, right, so. right, right. And uh, not too long ago, um, I've also heard uh, the military once again want to do some integrated um, augmented reality with some glasses along with Microsoft and definitely some accelerometers that are super small are going to be super, super helpful there. Well, I think Microsoft is going to be placed on a whole sense right now. Like it's it's fighting a little uh, situation with uh, the government in China, aren't they? Yes, and then politics come in. <laughs> it, it always does. We're only human after all. Um. Yeah, I mean, do you guys want to go to the second one, to the second point, or do you want to... Um, like keep at it on on this one right now the crowd no, says we, that we, we should continue like, yeah. yeah we can continue there you go. <laughs> number three wait 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 you skipped two yeah what about two we're gonna know one three and two and four. Oh, okay yeah. oh, okay wait 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 Help. let's just continue on the two you sure? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's get out of the way. <laughs> okay. So this is a feature that maybe a, you know fancier or more precise accelerometers could help. Engineers have uh, proposed the first model for a physically possible warp, physically possible warp drive. Think about it. Warp drive. The idea of a warp drive taking us across large areas of space faster than the speed of light FTL for short has a long been fantas- um oh has long fasc- fascinated scientists and sci- sci- sci-fi fans alike while we're still a very long way all the pun intended from jumping any universal speed limits that doesn't mean we'll never ride the wave the waves of warped space time and now a group of physicists have put together the first proposal for a physical warp drive based on a concept devised back in the 90s 
and they say it shouldn't break any of the laws of physics. I mean, our laws of physics. Theoretically speaking, warp drives bend and change the, the shape of space time, if that can be one thing, to, ex to exaggerate differences in time and distance that under some circumstances could see travelers move across distances faster than the speed of light. One of those circumstances was outlined more than a quarter of a century ago by Mexican theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre. His idea proposed in 1994 was that a spacecraft powered by something called an Alcubierre drive could achieve this faster than light travel. The problem is it requires a lot of negative energy in one place. Something that's simply not possible according to exi existing physics. But the now study, but the new study has a uh, has a workaround according workaround. to researchers from the independent research group Applied Physics based in New York. It's possible to ditch the fiction of negative energy and still make a warp drive albeit on that maybe a bit slower than we'd like read more on sciencealert.com once again sciencealert.com sciencealert.com all right uh so who wants to go first take a crack at this one Anyone? Anyone? I say Marcos <laughs> could go first. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Why not? He never goes first. <laughs> I, for the first time, Marcos. I, I read it, so I mean, I'm like, I'm waiting. Exactly, I'm waiting. you're fresh. So go. Okay. You're so, um, what do you think that negative energy is? My idea. Oh, sorry. Uh, my idea is that it's um, black matter, maybe, and uh, ooh, yeah, and that we just. Basically, my idea, my theory is that it, they're going to throw basically black matter at a specific point, And then we're just going to slingshot towards it, which can possibly make, take us at high speeds. We're probably going to need that laser accelerometer. Hopefully we don't go faster than, than light because any accelerometer that we have that goes at the speed of light will be useless. And I like to think about sci-fi and, and those things. So we're going to get a faster ride. Yo, but so Marcos, we did touch about uh, we did touch upon this type of topic last. I think I want to say last uh, podcast or was it two podcasts ago where we were talking about um, black holes and stuff like that. So it, essentially and, and correct me if I'm wrong. And obviously this this is theoretical, right? Are they you, you do think it's possible that they could harness the power of like a black hole or something or like a uh, like a I guess the pseudo um, neutron star or something like that and try to uh, produce the energy from that to like get us to uh, light speed so we can warp from or near like near, yeah yeah you know, yeah yeah from like point A to point B or something or maybe potentially like uh, w w time travel in, in some way shape or form well my guess is that the material science need to be needs to be up to snuff to even be able to handle if it's a ship what if we we can do it that it's just one individual like a wrist like a wristband that we can right travel different what, distances. what about like a delorean i i would definitely like jump in one of those i'd know? go with the with the watch <laughs> if anything as long as it's my galaxy watch you know and <laughs> you have sponsored. a galaxy watch yeah <laughs> it's like not sponsored but yeah, the material science has to be up to snuff just to even be able to handle anything. If it's a physical thing like an airplane, uh, it's going to have to handle high temperatures, low temperatures, high stresses, low stresses, all the, the maintenance, stresses. all the different all the stress. stresses. Right, right. And then have to be able to have a, a team that can maintain it. Right now, it's nice and pretty that it's theoretical because we can imagine the materials and all those things. Just like when we were doing um, 
stre uh, stress analysis on aircraft engines it was just crazy the um, like one blade was worth more than a lamborghini lamborghini <laughs> lamborghini <laughs> I, Lamborg li I like <laughs> linguini i love it yes <laughs> Where like our teacher would say this blade right here out of a, like a, a 64 set of blades is worth than than my car he would say so and it's a freaking just piece of metal Okay, so that, are they just addressing the FTL aspect or are they talking about the time dilation aspect as well? That's the thing. They're saying both like space and time. So, so I what, guess, time travel? That's hopefully. what I was hinting at. <laughs> at least how they framed it in, in Star Trek, they, they framed it as the warp drive was letting you move faster than light while maintaining time passing at the same time rate as everything else around you rather than you're suddenly a hundred years in the past essentially yeah now that there's a whole can of worms that yet yeah, one will have to worry about <laughs> but i don't think i think that i don't think they're talking about black holes here no that was just me uh just spitballing because i mean it kind of sounded like what we were talking about last podcast or like two podcasts ago yeah because i mean yeah i mean it was... sounds similar but yeah decent i mean so the key thing is like they are worried about the negative energy that is emitted from this thing and you know black holes are just a, basically a big vacuum right 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 again this was all you know predicated on my uh i guess uh lack of uh science fiction knowledge and me trying to harness the power of a black hole which is probably impossible so that that's <laughs> that's where it's coming from impossible for now maybe hopefully <laughs> yeah probably right jonathan any thoughts uh, i mean the one article was talking about a where there's a different article i think i found or something that was talking about using high gravitational fields to achieve the faster than light travel and i still I don't know. It seems like on this entire topic, there's still too many unknowns when they use the term dark matter for describing 80% of space that we don't understand. You know, it's just, it seems like, because they've got no better way to describe it than, hey, we don't understand what's happening in this area, so we're going to call it dark matter. <laughs> there's a lot of that's a valid point. mutual understanding that oh we're gonna fill up this gap and there could be a world literally of difference of knowing and not knowing wasn't there a study recently that the more you know the more cautious one is for example um the more and the opposite could also be true the less you know of a thing the more you assume that you know about the thing i i, I don't think i've read that article but i did uh kind of vaguely remember an, an anime that came out about uh so overly insane. cautious over overly cautious uh protagonist or hero that's about as far as i can think about this and so <laughs> a lot of his things right that he would worry about oh what if this ha what if i have to worry about this and this and this and he would eventually not go and do his thing because and it's worthless <laughs> i'm just kidding man yeah dude no but i i think to jonathan's point i think he it, that's a valid point there's just too many unknowns in order for people to like try to connect the dots it's like a little too far-fetched right now try to try to do all this so who's at I mean, fault it makes here for, for great science fiction yes oh absolutely but who's at Make... fault here right now for getting me excited you. uh i don't know you yourself <laughs> 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 and got me all riled up with okay i, yes. I know who the culprit is it's sciencealert.com again the sciencealert.com <laughs> the writer at science remember alert. that name <laughs> right 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 no nah, but i mean it, it's good to like uh to i guess read these uh science fiction uh, <laughs> articles they it's do my, make it is science fiction right now <laughs> right i mean they do make you wonder about potential outcomes of things that could happen in the future uh how we harness black matter <laughs> or negative energy or whatever it is i could have used that while commuting into the city anything to bypass the gwb let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> you gotta Absolutely, go faster than the man. speed of light <laughs> that's right it was only way to get through traffic 
Imagine it was either that or ticketed. doing like <laughs> the Spider-Man, you know, wall crawling or something, <laughs> like crossing the bridge, man. It's not the You're destination. Not get a ticket. <laughs> you gotta catch it first, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> it's not the destination. It's the friends we made in the way. Oh. And we're not gonna make any friends at warp speed. <laughs> you might run them maybe, over, or maybe the bugs that splatter on the windshield. You know, just coming in. Yeah, that's another interesting point because they're talking to you know because in Star Trek it's always we've got a chart around the stars. Uh, well, first of all, how fast are you able to turn at warp speed? Right. And exactly. second of all, uh, what happens if you hit something while you're doing that? Yeah. If you collide, it's alley. over. <laughs> I think you might get vaporized, to be honest, going at that mm. fast. I hope there's not a lot of space dust that you're hitting. Even True. the space dust is going to be an issue, like you're yeah, saying. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I feel like there's there's probably like little particles and stuff like that, and even like small rocks. You oh, probably yeah. just blast right through them. But if it's like, like maybe like a planet, <laughs> you might give it rise. The ultimate space rock. You you <laughs> might you might hit you might do damage. To you the might planet, hit a sun. But, oh, I mean that's true. <laughs> but still, I feel I feel like going in that fast, you might just get vaporized at that point. It's just. Don't you have so a you can say it just hits different. <laughs> Literally, it hits faster too. Jeez. You say we're about to crash land. Oh, wait, what? I can't <laughs> wait. As getting... long as you put your tray table up. <laughs> <laughs> put... Fasten your seatbelt. You That's again. right. Fasten your seatbelt sign. We're about to crash into a planet. <laughs> How far are we? We're 10 light years away. What do you mean? 10, 9, 8, boom. <laughs> right. That's pretty close. So, um, Marcos, yes, yes, yes. I was going to ask you as far as, um, this, okay. Like compared to the two, um, topics that we already read. So acceleration and, um, this, uh, uh butter. <laughs> right, right. No, I'm saying the science fiction article that we were reading, like compared to these two, which of these two was your first uh or was the first article you read from these two like why did you pick these two wait, wait i got a better question yes which of which of these two remind you mcflurries the the, the first one yeah the, the first one. <laughs> yeah the first one i i must say it's like how fast it's can it make a mcflurry or how precise can it make a mcflurry i mean like maybe the machinery uses some sort of uh accelerometer you know, it, it, it directly helps in uh, commerce <laughs> and so, uh, medicine for the soul. For the soul, yes. <laughs> so my my way of thinking of normally creating knots is how can I weave each one of these stories together? Okay. So there's some sort of co correlation going on between these two. So you have like a needle, the thread. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the shower. And a shower, shower, of course. <laughs> Clearly, yes. I'm trying Absolutely. to understand how the citrus fits into this, then. Oh, oh, th those are my notes. <laughs> oh yeah, normally, um, I, I we've recently been working on our style of delivery. More, many of these notes, but normally when I try to put my two notes, I don't know if you guys saw my, the the notes throughout the week. I put at least seven or eight. And then started removing things because like no no this this doesn't this doesn't connect this this <clears throat> no this makes no sense and i try to go in towards more mechanical not that much food but a lot of nature as well and um but no mcflurries <laughs> mcflurries is part of human nature full stop but no it's delicious ice cream man of human nature but no it's not made of human nature Wait, so would you consider uh, a McFlurry a soft serve or just regular run of the mill ice cream? What's I don't think it difference? qualifies as What's ice cream. What's the difference? Yeah. Right? The ingredients. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it qualifies as ice cream. They legally have to say it's soft serve because it doesn't have enough dairy. Yeah. There you go. So that's why I'm saying like try to like trying to classify it as an ice cream is like Salutations, Marcos here. This is a message to all the listeners out there. There are links in the show notes for our 
Twitter, email, and even show notes. Any questions or ideas for the podcast can be sent via these links. Now, back to our regularly scheduled podcast. Insulting to the ice cream, the noble ice cream. How dare you? How dare you? How Marcos? dare you? But what if the McFlurry <laughs> self identifies as ice cream? Uh, um, or an attack helicopter, by that matter. Let's That's see. Right. Does it? I mean, but yeah, I, I see where you're going with that. I mean, I think it really depends if it, if you ask for M and M's in it, or if you ask for like Reese's peanut butter cups in there, or the M and M. <laughs> or at that point, if you add them and them, it's just a concoction. Right, 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 right. Or do you do the crushed Oreos? I, I don't know. Crushed Oreos for me. So, Marcos, <laughs> how, how do these two, both of these totally. stories relate to McFlurries? That's the real question here. Do they make them better? You have a cup, right? No, no, no. no. Oh, oh, answer the question. Oh, Wait, do, do, do they make the McFlurries better? I think he's yes. <laughs> yes. Do they make them cheaper? <laughs> oh, Not enough Lord. data. Found. I need numbers <laughs> to be determined. He's like, if you multiply, I'm by. running the numbers right now. I'm, I'll tell you in a few. No. I need a derivative. He wants to see. He wants to see how fast he can get to McDonald's. <laughs> I can't well, wait to get a, a laptop-sized McFlurry machine. I mean, we're not we're not sponsored, but definitely hit up the DoorDash app on your phone and get yourself that fix. Mc my friend. The McDonald's app. <laughs> OK, you can actually do that. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> See, that's how McFlurry doesn't qualify as ice cream. <laughs> you could order McFlurry, have it delivered in three days and it will still be solid. Yep. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment. <laughs> Both. Yes. <laughs> yes to both yes so um do you guys want to move on to the next uh point or do you want to do you guys want to um give jonathan his uh his spotlight hour right now i'd say jonathan jonathan i'm happy to continue uh, we're just here i'm just here to have fun with you guys all right All right, so Marcos, if you yes will allow it, I will read uh, my first point real quick, and then I we'll allow move it. On. Thank you, sir. Very finished. good. <laughs> All right, so um, point number three. This is uh, my segment, real quick. I'm gonna read off uh, the first one. Uh, it's called. Uh, it's titled "Squeeze." Squeeze every last drop out of citrus season. So this is all an article from Anne Hazel, uh, Hazel, from Taste, uh, the Taste article that I get or the newsletter I get um, via email. So reading through it, and I'll read it right now, um, and then I'll go like piece by piece in the article. Um, so it says right here, and I quote: uh, "It can be tempting at this." at this particular stage of winter to throw your hands up at the idea of seasonality and just buy anything that's alluring and green green and hydro uh, hydroponically grown at the supermarket but this might mean missing out on the last few great squeezes of citrus season with all of its sweet sour gently bitter dimension with a crate of navel oranges you can enjoy a few weekends worth worth of freshly squeezed orange juice uh, perfect for a thick layer of fluff in a Garibaldi. Two, a competition-worthy batch of marmalade, a pot, a pot of carnitas, and a jar of juicy uh, and a jar of juicy marinated canned cherry tomatoes. And you still might have a couple left for dessert. A few lemons can be transformed into a briny preserved lemon paste that will perk up any vinaigrette. A luxurious batch of salmon uh, nose rats tuna confit and some really good pan fried sardines and this doesn't even scratch the surface of all the great fruits caracaras sasumas mandarins yuzus and more that are just waiting to shine some light into your kitchen this is all 
a quote that I took from and Hazel from this article that I was reading. And the reason I basically picked this uh, article was for the simple fact that obviously uh, it got me thinking about citrus and oranges and all the other tasty things you can do with the citruses uh, that they mentioned. But some some things of note that I that was reading through was definitely um, the yuzu koshu uh, that that was paired really quite nicely with fish tacos that was mentioned by Diana Kwan in the article. And I think personally, like um, when you eat a taco, usually it is paired with your cilantro, uh, your your onions. Uh, your radishes and for whatever reason hitting it with like a nice squeeze of fresh lemon or fresh lime for, like that brightness brings out like and cuts through the like the greasiness but also really perks up and gives like a nice bright flavor to the taco that you're eating so in in this case uh they they're talking about fish tacos so usually the fish tacos that i'm accustomed to usually when i make at home or I go out and eat are usually like the beer batter type of uh, fish and um, yes <laughs> <laughs> right right and and definitely comes with what we call curtido um, so in, in layman's terms like the the cabbage with onions and um, and it's pickled basically to a certain degree with a bunch of lime juice jalapenos or habaneros or something of that nature and a lot and, of love uh, <laughs> absolutely a lot of love so it, it got me thinking when I'm when I started reading through all the other articles that was in this one article, um, the the lemons that that you use when you preserve them to make a paste and you can use them in like pastas and dressings, uh, even in Bloody Marys and stuff like that or vinaigrettes when you'd want to make like a nice vinaigrette for a salad or something for those people that are about that salad life, you know, uh, but also the other one that mentions um, pan pan searing or pan frying uh sardines uh using lemons to really bring out the the full flavor of these sardines uh that go well with the saltiness of them and even though it's a pain in the butt to try to eat them because of the little bones or whatnot but it really goes it goes well with seafood and stuff like that um another another of the the i guess you could say the the ingredients or the recipe that was uh, mentioned in one of the articles was the tuna confit. So this was an article written by Daniela uh, Galarza and um, it, just using citruses and like other, like, I guess you can say uh, staples that you can, you probably might have like peppercorns and stuff like that um, in your, in your pantry. You can definitely try to, you know, make this type of salmon instead of searing, baking, or grilling you can try your hand at a confit poaching the fish in like a nice low and slow olive oil with like nice flavors it gives you a really good uh, texture and obviously salmon is really filling um i don't know if you guys are, are you know if you guys eat fish or not but i think um really trying this technique of confit of low and slow olive oil having it cook in that in that temperature low and slow um and just hitting it with that with that um with that lemon it, it for me i think it, it it's delicious because i mean make it into a sandwich you can have it on the side with some like rice and uh maybe some steamed veggies or something so it might be something you guys want to like take a look uh read the article and, and you know give yourself you know new ideas of how you can not only eat certain um proteins but how like it pairs well with uh, citruses, uh, which is the, I guess, the base of this whole article. Um, and it does give you other little things that you might want to consider, whether it be a dessert, whether it be a drink, whether it be like a, a main dish or a side dish. Uh, for me, uh, that's why I wanted to like uh, share this article with you guys and, and the listeners uh, tonight. Because it's something that, I mean, we should take a little more uh time to think about what we're about to what we compare with our food um at least for me i find it interesting i don't know what do you guys think jonathan i i like fish a lot 
my, my wife doesn't really like fish or the small fish, so we basically never have it. But oh, man. some of my my some of my favorite memories growing up is we would go to a lake somewhere and just catch fish for a week. Nice. Um, it was amazing. Awesome. You know, you basically just grill it uh, with lemon juice and whatever else. And that, the, that was amazing. I, I would totally do that. So nowadays, the only time I really get fish is if it's in sushi and I'm eating out for work or something right, like right, that. Right, right, right. Sadly, uh, but totally the way understand. that you're describing it is now making me very hungry. <laughs> that's the point, man. No, ah, Jonathan, that sounds awesome. So thanks. No, thanks for that. Thanks. Now I'm hungry. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll definitely get, grab you a little DoorDash uh, on the way out. Um, no, but like my question to you, Jonathan, would be, so do, would you prefer um, fish caught in like a lake or the river or are you more of like an open sea type of uh, fish type of person? We we would I've never actually done open sea fishing myself, so it was always at a lake. That's just sort of where we were able to go for for okay, family vacations okay. growing up. Oh, that's awesome! Is there any fish in particular that you uh, fancy more than others? Yes, <laughs> probably uh, salmon or trout. Once again, nice. that's, that's what we that's what, that's what we caught. That's what was fresh, and that was amazing. No, yeah, definitely salmon and trout. Always, those are like hitters man those are like my go-to's as well maybe not so much trout but definitely the salmon uh around here like at least um because uh i guess you could say uh, it's a little more accessible to go like on a charter boat and go out to right, the sea a right, little bit right i'm able to go um do that uh usually like around summertime more often than not when it's nice and warm uh, I'll try to go out uh, with my my dad or, or my brother, um, and we'll go out to the charter boats. Uh, I believe it's called Viking, and we go out to um, uh, what's it called? Uh, at at the end of um, the, the end of New York, uh, what's it called? My uh, Island Sound. Yeah, yeah, no, but <sighs> Montauk. There you go. Wow, that slipped my mind for a second. Montauk so, Chronicles. <laughs> no, so I we we drive literally from where we are all the way out to Montauk. So it's about that's a hike. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a drive. Oof. It's a drive. But I mean, it, it's fun though. From beginning to end, it's it's always good times. Uh, definitely go out. You know, fresh air, fresh sea breeze. You know, get that brininess in the air, and definitely just having a great time grabbing the fishing pole like letting it hit the, the bottom, waiting for that fish to to take that, like that bite. And you like, like fighting with the fish and reeling it up just so you could see that it was like, not maybe a boot, but you know, one of the flying fish and you get discouraged a little bit. So you, you know, let it go. And then until you catch, you know, like a nice um, blue fish or a pogey or something like that, or a flounder or sea bass. So it's always exciting stuff, but uh, definitely like, it, like like to your point jonathan like it's one of those experiences that you fully enjoy and then when you actually catch something that you want to eat or you're going to eat and you grill it up or you put it in the oven or something hit it with that nice citrus blast of uh lemon or lime or something like that uh it, it always hits it always hits man do you guys do, do, do people go down the shore at all i think that's what we'd call the bennies uh, I, I mean, I, for the I most spent part, about a year and a half in uh, Tom's River. Oh, okay, okay. So, I, for for us around here, I mean, the closest thing we have is like going either to the Bronx River or going to oh, the Hudson River, and that, oh, that's that's a that's a no go for us. Uh, that's oh. why we we yeah, that's why we take our time driving all the way up, up to Montauk just so we can avoid that. Oof. And you know, we'll pay for the charter boat and. You know, go unless we really go upstate New York and, you know, we go to the fish, uh, I mean, the Finger Lakes or something like that, or we'll go to some sort, uh, some other lake that's up north or upstate. Okay. Um, but I mean, again, it, it's always going to be a, like an adventure and a half, you know, a Pokemon journey just to get just to get to, to a place to <laughs> try to fish or something. He's like, no, I got your ball. Yeah, it's a fact. I mean, try, trying to trying to do those, uh, like I guess you could say, like fishing trips or trying to do farming or something like that. It it it, it could sometimes tends to be a little bit complicated just because you don't have the the land <laughs> to do it in or the ability to to get to the place uh, at, 
like in your own convenience or at your own convenience you kind of have to like uh, make the time to plan out the the whole pokemon journey just to go and, and do that like for for no, when autumn starts right and you have apple picking season around here you know you go out your way you know you take like a day off on saturday or on a friday or on a sunday or something you go out with you know your girlfriend your wife your husband your mom your dad or what, whoever you're going to go with right or the team or something and you go out and you go apple picking and it's something you do but it's obviously it's not something you do every day where uh, I wish I, I were able to like, you know, go out to the backyard, you know, oh, hey, look, fresh vegetables and fruits, you know, at the orchard or whatever the case is, you know, go down the block and oh, here's the river. I'm going to catch myself a nice little trout or something, you know, oh, gotta get out of the poke. city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, much, that's standard fair around here. Yeah, no, I had. I mean, uh, I mean, for me, at least. I I would love that type of lifestyle to a certain degree, but like trying to leave everything I have already here is a little difficult for me to do that unless, you know, I have a, uh, I would have like a summer home or something like that or a weekend home where I can just go there and escape and do that, you know, a little bit more long term. That would be awesome. Houses are pretty cheap down here. You'd be surprised. Really? It, it has uh, oh, yeah. state been a little bit better or a little bit more favorable during uh, <laughs> these tough economical times or everything's just been like selling like hotcakes. Because, I, I mean, you'd be surprised. People have been leaving the city to come up to the suburbs over here in New York. So it's a little hectic. I mean, I know what housing prices were in New Jersey before I moved, but... I'm, okay. I'm sure they were even more expensive in Westchester. I mean, do you guys do you guys have a decent idea of what your local yeah, housing market is like? Yeah, like you're not seeing anything less than a hundred thousand for the most part. What is it? A hundred thousand for a, a two room, one bathroom apartment? <laughs> apartment in the city? Yeah, I mean, in a high rise, like a, a okay high rise. But I mean, even here in Westchester, I mean. It'll be hard pressed if you can find a house at, you know, at that price. I mean, if you're going to like speaking, speaking very transparently here, like if you were to go out and in Westchester and in like go to Rochelle in a, uh, oh, a Scarsdale, Hartsdale or something like that. Right. Or yeah, Valhalla. Like if you're going to go out your way or even a White Plains, you're going to go to like a, somewhere to, to rent an apartment. You'll be you'll be looking at at a at a price of like around eight to nine hundred dollars per room, and that's just like and mind you, this is on yeah. some you're sharing the 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 apartment, so you have you're renting your room, but you're sharing the bathroom, you're sharing the the kitchen or something like that, and you're paying like eight hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars, easy. So, I mean, it, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. So, I mean, yeah. I, my mortgage is seven hundred dollars. So, My yeah. God! It, it, I it's like we're in the wrong. Right. Oh, we're in the wrong. Just rub state. it in. Three rub bedroom, it two bath. Eleven hundred square foot basement that's unfinished. Good lord! Uh, my rent over uh, here is what thirteen hundred a month. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just that's a, that's just about what I was paying for a two bedroom, in. top half of the house when we were living in New Jersey. Yeah. So. <laughs> My Good lord. God. Yeah, no, we're in the wrong state, doing the wrong things, man. Oh, man, Jonathan, you're living the life, man. <laughs> that being uh, said, we have, have really like, bad medical care down here. So, you know, there's a trade off. Hey, it, yeah, I mean, so don't yeah, get there's hurt. That's what I'm saying. Look down don't here, but don't get hurt. Yeah, yeah don't get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, ride your horse. Just don't fall off, you know? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Do, do you have any, um, like, dogs or anything? That Are you a pet type of person or... Uh, we we actually know. have a rabbit that's outside. Awesome. Still qualifies. Still qualifies. Yeah. Right. Right. Are you thinking of getting any like uh, dogs or cats or horses or X Y Z no, or something like that? No. Uh, it, I only like big dogs. My wife only likes little dogs, and she's pretty allergic to everything. So it's ouch, a no go on the indoor pets. Right. Right. So no uh, amphibians or reptiles of any sort. Nah, that that's voice. that's not in the cards for us, unfortunately. Or turtles. Okay. <laughs> Turtle. 
<laughs> oh man. Um, no, but Jonathan, mm-hmm. I, I think as far as uh, as um the way you make it seem, I think that's a that's that's a good trade off. I mean, you might not have the best like health situation out there. <laughs> um, just don't, just don't situation. get hurt. Just don't get hurt. Right, right. <laughs> but for for but a normal so, healthy group of people, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> Jesus, man. I would love to go out there and find me something. That would be awesome. I mean, hey, we go shooting in, in you know, in the backyard of neighbors because <laughs> You're like, there's we nobody go shooting, around. Full stop. <laughs> yeah, we go shooting. So, we go shooting. so how, how, how lax is the, is, is um gun control over there or regulation? I can open Do you need carry a without a permit. Okay. Okay. I can open carry awesome. without a permit in Virginia. Like literally the awesome. saying, sun's out, gun's out. That's right. <laughs> Oh, that, that doesn't mean I do, awesome, but I could. Man. No, of course, of course. No, but that's always a reassuring thing. Oh, look, there's dinner. Bang. <laughs> well, no, no, that's a whole different thing. Now you've got, <laughs> really? you've got seasons and you've got to get your licenses okay. and other okay. various, you know, See? that's 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 there's different than open things. carry. Yeah, so, yeah, that's yeah awesome. you, gotta, you can just open carry. How- Okay, so I mean, so how does seasons work over there for for like uh, for bucks and stuff like that? Um, so basically, you've got a particular group of days that you can hunt this particular thing. So you know, you've got uh, I can't remember if it's a week for buck season, and then they have a week where it's you know muzzle versus bow. Uh, okay. They're different. They're, they're they're times that don't overlap. Um, then you have a very limited time where you can shoot female deer. I think the the bucks are more more allowed than other things. You've right. got turkey season. I mean, yeah, there's different. There's there's just basically windows of time where right, you go right, buy your right. license and then you go camp out for or camp out. You go out for however many days or weekends that you're able right. to. And what about duck yeah, season or even rabbit <laughs> season? Duck season. <laughs> rabbit season. Duck season. <laughs> Okay, no, I think the, the 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 turkey season must be must be super dope if like you're you're looking at um Thanksgiving like a week away or whatever the case is or like a couple of days away. Yeah, just make sure you get all the pellets out. Really? Huh. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean bird shots of like, you know, fifty different tiny pellets. Uh just make sure you get them all out. Imagine okay, you're, so in, you're, you're in your turkey and then mm, what's this? Yeah. So I'm are thankful you have never use? had that happen. So okay, but like, do you have to use a certain type of round in order for you to hunt certain type of uh, like, I guess uh, animals or whatever? It it depends on how good you are. I mean, mm. you could theoretically go hunting a deer with a 22, but you you know you're basically gonna have to shoot it through the eye or something because uh, you know a 22 is gonna be Egg, pretty right. hard to <laughs> take it down. Yeah, you know, yeah, 360 yeah. no scope that deer in order to take it down. But um, <laughs> you know, oh, I'd typically rather, you got. I'd rather do the drop shot. <laughs> yeah, typically you got your 308s or your 30 out sixes for deer. Uh, I mean, if you're gonna do something small like rabbit, you're definitely gonna want a 22 because otherwise uh, there won't be a whole lot left besides a mess. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Unless you want to paint the walls or something. Yeah, I mean, for <laughs> for squirrel, I'll do 22 or a pellet gun or something. <gasps> What okay. about boar? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, boar, you just get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not, no, not shoot. worth. It's not worth those, that bacon. Those, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you can go to Texas and do wild, wild pig hunting, and those are where yeah. you're 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 using uh, an ot six or a Winchester five hundred or something like that. You, those are those right. are those are big guns. You, you need yeah, you yeah, need big yeah. guns to take down those pigs. Um, I it's actually a pretty dangerous hunt uh, those I, I damn pigs it. it's like you want to feel a recoil they're feral they are nasty yeah definitely yeah no. they need to feel the power of but you want to dislocate <laughs> yeah. you want to dislocate your shoulder with the recoil with that one <laughs> nah you just gotta get good I mean it's not that big of a deal no it's true it's true as well, long as you're a certain size, I mean, you're, you're gonna, you're, you're, it'll be okay. I mean, uh, I've shot a 50 cal, and yeah, it, it kicks, but I'm a big dude. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Uh, cool, have cool, you shot cool. one standing? Yeah, there's a, there's a. So oh. actually, it's not bad for. Uh, at least there was when I was living up there. There's a uh, gun range out in Pennsylvania in the Poconos. My parents used to live okay. in the Poconos. 
So okay. we'd get a lot of people from New York that would, you know, the novelty of actually getting to handle a gun, yeah. being, you know, the threat of thrown in jail. And they would have all sorts of <laughs> guns that you could shoot. So, you know, they'd have an AK-47 and a 50 cal and all sorts of other nice. exotic things. And we could take our guns there and shoot there. Oh, no. man. Recently, I've been hearing a lot of marketing for people wearing face masks, even in the gun ranges, but not for COVID situation, but for lead in in people's blood and the gun eh. closed in gun ranges, indoor gun ranges. So what's your stance on that, Jonathan? I mean, I wear masks everywhere I'm around people, but that's more for COVID. Right, right. I don't know that there's a whole lot to that, honestly. Okay, okay. I mean, if you're if you're worried about getting hit by lead at the gun range, don't stand down range. <laughs> lead particles in your blood. <laughs> That's right. Don't stand down. Yeah. That's right. Oh, man. So have you guys gotten to shoot anything at all? Yeah, a shot definitely. Gun. For me, a shot. Okay. okay. Same, same for me. Same for me. Um, since my dad does have uh, hunting rifles because he has gone um, hunting for buck over here in New York State, but upstate New York. And okay. bow and arrow. So, yeah, and bow and arrow. But I usually don't uh, do the bow. I think the gun is a little more practical, at least for me. Um, but yeah, no, it's exciting stuff. You get to go out, experience uh, wilderness <laughs> at its finest, <laughs> the wildlife. You're but looking for Bambi's fun. dad. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. He, he said he was going for milk and, and um, some cigs, but never came back because you took care of him. <laughs> he was delicious. <laughs> Definitely. Little barbacoa right there. <laughs> I mean, I've got clients that'll make homemade deer jerky and it is amazing. No, um, yeah, definitely. I, um, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, the yeah, I'm deer jerky is on good point. jerky, man. No, definitely. That's super delicious. And, um, but I, I guess just to um, finish up this, the, this part of, or this, what is it, number three? Yeah, right. Uh, number three yes. uh, for this point. Uh, I wanted to hear uh, Josue's uh, point of view, if he had any, if not, so we can move on to the last, to my last point, I guess. Oh, uh, all I thought about was this. Yes. Oh, never mind. Oh, come on, do it. Do it. <laughs> oh, wait. Do it. Do it. Uh, come on, do it. <laughs> Get on the chopper. Uh, yes, please. Oh, no, oh, no. That's it. Very good, <clears throat> sir. I appreciate you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move on real quick to um, the last, uh, my last point. So it's number four. Uh, aren't you kidding me? An NFT piece of digital art just sold at auction for almost $70 million. So this is a, a segment or an article that I got from VT Post from Tom Zenner. Um, so it reads... If and it's quote quoted, uh, if you're one of the tens or maybe hundreds of millions of people who don't fully understand how NFTs work, uh, why they are such a uh, the rage right now, and why and how NFT art pieces can fetch small fortunes when they are up to bid, well, this story is going to really make you scratch your head. Are you sitting down? An NFT, not yes. fungible token, virtual art piece by the artist Beetle just sold at Christie's for nearly 70,000, uh, 70 million rather dollars. Uh, it has officially become the most expensive NFT ever sold at auction. And it wasn't just a couple of nerdy art collectors trying to outdo each other to own this piece. The bidding was described as being frenzied and it lasted two weeks. We have officially entered an era where blockchain based digital images now command the price paid for Picasso's and Monet's. So basically reading this article, I'm looking at, at a bunch of different articles uh, amongst these, you know, the, the whole interview between Hey there, this is Marcos. This is the end of part one of the LTS podcast. Come back on part two for later on the week. Right, Josue? Yes. So it will come back in. Uh, if it's Tuesday, I'll come back Thursday. If it's Thursday, I'll come back Tuesday. And if it's Tuesday, yes. And it keeps on going in a loop. And we are on East Coast time. 
So I think last time in the last intro, I said four hours or three. I think four hours. Yeah, it's supposed to be three. So don't don't listen to past me. It's three hours, not four. Meaning if you're on the West Coast, you're, you know. If you're, if you're on the West Coast, you're three hours, I think, ahead of us. Or behind behind, us? behind. 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 Yes. Behind. But yeah. Thank you for oh, it doesn't listening. matter because we post these early in the morning. So thank you for listening to us to Left Tech and Sundry. Oh, and don't forget, there are Please show notes back. down Please below. Come back. Please. Are too much. Please. But yeah, there are show notes. There is a link for the merch store. There are all the other things. You know, just read the show notes. And thank you once again for listening to Life Tech and Sundry. Talk to you later. Bye. Have a nice day. Hi there. Thank you for tuning into the LTS podcast. All the notes and more can be found in the description. By the way, we have a social media page where content is posted regularly. Feel free to reach out at, at us through there or via email. Both are found in the description. When you support the show, we have a merch store where you can buy an item that you like. If buying merch is not your thing and you just want to support the show directly, we also have links to those too, if you'd like. Thank you. Also, every comment is really appreciated. Credits in the description as well. Peace.